one of the nations that has continued to enthrall historians and history enthusiasts has to be the captivating tales and intriguing mystery of ancient Japan. From its mythical origins to its rise as a powerful dynasty, Japan has inspired and captivated everyone around the world. There was a time when the modern and highly advanced Japan was once stuck in a stone age. But have you ever stopped to wonder, when did the story of Japan actually begin? And most importantly, how did a land stuck in the Stone Age evolve into one of the most thriving civilizations around the globe? In today's video, we are going to answer all your questions and dig deeper into the tantalizing mysteries of ancient Japan. So, strap in as we travel back in time into the annals of Japan's enigmatic past, where samurai roamed, emperors ruled and legends were born, and discover the nation's complete history. There was a time when the modern Japanese technicians and highly successful professionals were Stone Age hunters from Northeast Asia who inhabited the Japanese islands. It is believed that these primitive Japanese hunters arrived in Japan as early as 30,000 years ago. These hunters traveled using a land bridge connecting Japan to mainland Asia, which was formed during the Ice Ages. Since pottery was still discovered in Japan, the Paleolithic era is also popularly known as the Pre-Ceramic Era among historians, or Sendokai period. The story took a turn when the icy grip of the last Ice Age released it all, and the fourth and recent Ice Age came to an end. There was an enormous climatic shift. Sea levels rose and the land bridge that provided a way for Japanese hunters and travelers submerged forever selecting Honshu and Hokkaido Islands and making Japan a lonely land once again. It was just the beginning of a new era. Now you must be wondering how this isolation impacted the development of Japan's history and culture. Were they able to adapt to the new world? Enter the Jomon period where Japanese showed some exceptional creativity and ingenuity and showed that they could survive and thrive. The word Jomon originates from cord-marked pottery designs. The Jomon people used to make unique pottery by wrapping a cord around it. Global history unlocked a new level of creativity with Jomon pottery, one of the earliest potteries of the world. The Jomans continued to survive by using fishing, hunting and gathering as a primary source of survival. They lived in small villages with only six to ten families in each village. However, by the end of the Jomon era, community life increased and became more complex. As we bid farewell to the Jomon period, we find ourselves with a profound legacy. The cord pattern pottery and story of surviving even when the world had drastically changed for the Yomons. From artistic inspiration to lessons in sustainable living, their legacy endures. The story of these ingenious people who met the challenges of the changing world is a testament to human adaptability and innovation. The Jomon period was followed by the Yayoi period a chapter in Japanese history that saw the birth of remarkable innovation and technological improvements. This era began in Kyushu. The successors of Jomans didn't only keep the art of pottery alive, but also improved it. From cooking to storage pots and other religious duties, these potteries could now be used for a wide range of purposes. However, unlike the Joman era, the Yayoi period was marked with a much more settled lifestyle. Farming and agricultural activities began during this period. It was for the first time Japanese started rice cultivation. Widespread rice farming led to the development of a highly complex social hierarchy and larger settlement. Not only this, but these creative people also began other activities, including mining smelting and extensive use of metals like iron and bronze. The ideas for using metal continents may have been borrowed from Han's culture or other continents, but Japanese were quick to add their own unique touch to it. Since the population during this period had almost doubled, it gave rise to conflicts over land and water. As a result, various chiefs and political leaders emerged during this time. Although we have little clarity about the ruler or the capital during this time, it is clear that Japan was growing into a large and complex nation. With massive improvements made in this period, and so many milestones achieved. It is believed that this period lasted for more than five to six centuries. Moving on to the next era of Japanese history, 
the Kofun period which was marked by monumental tombs, exquisite artifacts, and the rise of an aristocracy that left an indelible mark on Japanese history. Kofun itself means old tomb which reflected the power of political figures who emerged and grew stronger during this period. One of the best examples has to be the grand tomb of Emperor Nintoku, who ruled in the early 400s near modern Osaka. The grandeur of the tombs is also evident from the treasures, jewelries, mirrors and other crucial tools that were recovered from these tombs. Interestingly, these things were buried to give the dead company in the afterlife. Not only this, but horse bones and trappings have also been recovered, which suggests that military developments also took place during the same period in Japan. According to many historians, Japan was heavily influenced by China during this period. They also learned how to write, make paper, porcelain, silk and lacquer. It is quite intriguing how the Kofun period set the stage for a dramatic shift in Japan's political landscape, shaping a culture of prestige, ritual and some great societal changes. The next period that gave Japanese a political and cultural identity was the Yamato period which lasted from 250 to 538 AD. During this period, significant developments occurred that laid the foundation for Japan's future identity and societal structure. The Yamato clan, centered in the Nara Basin, gradually asserted authority over other regional clans, leading to the establishment of a centralized government. This marked the beginning of the imperial dynasty in Japan. Once again, the Yamato rulers adopted and adapted cultural elements from neighboring regions, including the Korean Peninsula and China. This era also saw the development of Shinto as a central religious practice. The Yamato rulers claimed divine ancestry and established rituals that emphasized their connection to the spiritual world. Near the end of the Yamato period, Buddhism was introduced to Japan, marking a significant shift in religious and cultural practices. The adoption of Buddhism had far-reaching effects on art, architecture, and philosophical thought. Advances in agriculture, architecture, and art occurred during this period. The construction of large tombs called kofun and the creation of intricate clay figurines called haniwa reflect the society's growing sophistication. The next period that followed the Yamato period was the Asuka period, which is marked by the introduction of Buddhism, infusion of foreign ideas, the establishment of political reforms, and the rise of influential clans that would play a pivotal role in shaping Japan's future. The cultural exchanges and structural changes during this era laid the groundwork for the subsequent periods of Japanese history. The Asuka period saw a notable increase in the influence from mainland Asia, particularly through interactions with the kingdom of Kudara, Paikya, on the Korean peninsula. As a result, there was a lot of exchange of cultural, religious, and administrative ideas. Buddhism wasn't just introduced, but also practiced during this era. The ruling class, particularly figures like Prince Shotoku, played a crucial role in promoting and supporting Buddhism's spread in Japan. Prince Shotoku also promoted Chinese ideas and principles in Japan. He is credited with writing the Constitution of 17 Articles, which outlined moral and political principles to guide the country's governance. By 645, Nakatomi no Kamatari initiated the era of the Fujiwara clan's influence, which would last until the rise of the samurai class in the 11th century. The Fujiwara clan was all set to become, become a powerful and influential force in Japanese politics, shaping the country's trajectory. The year 645 also marked the implementation of the Taika reforms. These reforms introduced a new government and administrative system modeled after Chinese principles. Land reform was a crucial component, with all land being bought by the state and then redistributed among farmers to support a new tax system, which was inspired by China. There we have it, folks. Ancient Japan's historical saga comes to an end. Despite being stuck in the Stone Age like every other nation, nothing stopped Japan from becoming one of the most advanced and modern nations of the world that gracefully celebrates its history and embraces the challenges of tomorrow. Japan's history isn't not only intriguing, but also inspiring at so many levels. And the best thing is 
the nation is proud of their history and still cherishes their roots. How do you think Japan's ancient history teaches us to embrace new change and forge knee paths while embracing our cultural roots? We would love to hear your valuable thoughts on our video in the comment section below. On that note, we are wrapping up today's video. If you enjoyed today's journey back in time, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share our videos with your friends and family who are history enthusiasts and would enjoy this interesting historical narrative. To keep an eye on the daily dose of fascinating historical facts and happenings around the world, smash the subscribe button. We will see you soon with another exciting video.